Good day everyone, today we will be discussing about moisture content and water activity. You might think that these two concepts are interchangeable, but in this video we will, dis we will learn how these two distinguished from one another. Before we move forward, I would like to define our two concepts here. Moisture content is the amount of water in the food sample and this can be expressed as dry or wet basis. If you would like to learn more about calculations of moisture content and how to express it as dry or wet basis, I have a video for it and I'll put it down in the description. Going back, water activity on the other hand is the partial pressure or the vapor pressure of the food over the vapor pressure of pure water in a constant constant temperature and pressure these two parameters should be constant because these two can affect how water molecules move and if they change how water molecules move they basically can change the water activity of food samples. This is the technical definition of water activity. But more commonly, water activity is the amount of free water, the amount of free water for microorganisms to be used. Also, biochemical reactions depend on water activity because it helps facilitate reaction between two molecules. To further illustrate how these two concepts are different, I will be showing you an example. And what I have here is a bread. It's, it's a bread and a slice of cheese. There we go. So, based from literature, the moisture content of these two food products is around 35%. However, we know that one product lasts longer than the other. Shelf life, or the amount of time a product has before its quality deteriorates, is quite significant because bread has a shelf life of around 3 to 6 days, whereas cheese, they can last up to months. Can we really use moisture content to, to predict the shelf life of food products? And how are these products with the same moisture content behave differently? If we look at their water activity, we will see that bread has a water activity of 0.95, whereas cheeses has a water activity of 0.5. And based from our definition earlier, we would see that bread has a lot more water available for microorganisms or biochemical reactions to facilitate deterioration whereas in cheeses it, it's almost as half as that of bread and because of this the shelf life is significantly extended so here's a table showing common food products and their water activity so for fresh meat and fishes we have a high water activity and we know that if you don't keep fresh meats in cold temperature, in freezing temperatures, they will spoil almost within the same day. Additionally, here's another table showing microorganisms and their required water activity for them to proliferate. Basically, we can see that bacteria requires a lot more water activity than that of yeasts and molds. And of course, we have microorganisms that require lower water activity and they're called halophiles or xerophiles. Lastly, I would like to share with you how we can manipulate water activity so that we can create shelf-stable food products. And in this video, I'll show you three examples. And the first one is drying. Basically, in drying, you remove you remove water from the food product and if there are lower water molecules in the food product 
you basically decrease the amount of free water for microorganisms to grow. And examples of this is dried fishes, dried fruits. So when water is removed from these food products, the shelf life of food products extends significantly. The second way we can lower water activity of food products is by adding solutes or as it's called humectant. The principle for this is that when you add humectant, you bind water for the so that these water molecules are not free thereby microorganisms cannot use them and, and the rate of biochemical reactions decrease some examples of this are sugar we also have a table salt we have glycerol in the food industry sorbitol when you add these items in food products they have this vapor pressure lowering effect so that water activity decreases and lastly we have freezing and here water turns into ice so liquid water and that is the form of free water when you turn them into solid water or ice it is no longer available for microorganisms to use for their daily operations and they cannot survive or they cannot grow rapidly when water is in the frozen state versus when water is in a liquid state. So here are the ways you can lower water activity, drying, addition of solutes, and freezing. That's all for today and I hope you learned a lot. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos about the science of food. Don't forget to share the video and have a great day.